Some of your frustrations as a leader is struggling with the fact that some of the people under your leadership follow you with no problem. And the others, well, they're a little bit slow to the table. So in this video, we will be covering the different leadership styles and the four best leadership skills that every leader must have, no matter what style you are, to get your people to want to follow you. Let's get into it. My name is Juan Alvarado. I am your personal and professional development coach where I help those in leadership overcome the gap between their position and their people by giving you strategies, tips, and tools that will strengthen your relationship, making you a purposeful leader. Now let's get into it. So there are different leadership styles. From my experience as a United States Army veteran and a director of a nonprofit, I've learned one huge lesson, that nowadays people are looking more for a coach than they are a boss. They want a mentor over a manager. And so some of the conflict nowadays is an old school style of leading or managing and a new school style of leading and managing. Some might call it old school versus new school. And so there's a miscommunication there. So the first style of leadership that I wanna go over is the coaching style. The coaching style is motivational. So think about any sports coach. There are those people that will be with you throughout the process, that will bring you in when you make mistakes, tell you what you did wrong, motivate you, and then send you right back out to play the game or to do the job. Those coaches are motivational. Some people like that and some people don't. In comparison, you have a different leadership style called a bureaucratic leader, where in that environment, those leaders believe in a hierarchy and duty focus. So think about positions on a totem pole. You have those people that are over you. There must be a form of respect and follow. So in the military, it was shut your mouth, don't say anything and do what you're told only speak when spoken to. It has that hierarchy, I am in charge, I talk, you listen. And that rubs a lot of people the wrong way. Next you have autocratic leadership, which is authoritarian base, which basically means I'm in charge, I tell you what we're doing, how we're doing it, and what ways you must do it, which leaves autonomy out the door. It is my way or the highway, and in all honesty, I don't know anyone who wants to follow that type of leadership. Next you have a servant leader. Servant leadership is all about giving. It's others before self, which is a good leadership style, but for some people might come off too soft for their liking. And our last one, transformational leadership, and is like its title, creating a movement of change, changing or transforming a group or business. They are challenging in the duty at hand, but also communicative because they need to get across the procedures and the policies of why we're moving from point A to point B. Now, I have experienced all of those types of leadership. I've been under those leaders and I've actually grown from different aspects of leadership. I was very authoritative before being in the military. I've also displayed democratic leadership, which is supportive and innovative. And I've kind of gone back and forth between a servant leader and a coach. So there is a lesson that I've learned throughout the years of leadership from the military to being a police officer, to being a parent, to being a director of programs, is you're not gonna get it right the first time. And your leadership style is not gonna win everyone over. And not one style is the best. There might be better ones for certain situations. However, you must be authentic to you and your leadership style. No one wants to follow a fake leader, someone who puts on a facade, someone who puts on a mask, someone who says one thing and then does something else. One of my favorite books in my leadership journey was reading this, The Leadership Challenge. And in this book, Kozes and Posner did a study. And in this study, they gave pages upon pages of different leadership traits, skills, and characteristics, and asked hundreds of thousands of people from every continent, every demographic, every race, ethnicity, every level of income, the lowest level of work, all the way to the highest level of work. So first year worker to a CEO, president, owner, and everybody in between. And what they found was the same four characteristic traits, the same qualities, traits, skills, the same four ranked higher than all the other ones. Before we get started in these four traits, they're not in any particular order, but the first one, is trust and honesty. Now listen, trust is one of those things that is gonna develop over time. So if you're a leader, I don't care if it's day one, year one, or year 20 or 30, trust takes time. 
And the things that I've learned in the military, in the police department, and being a boss was in order to gain trust, you must give trust. So if you're a leader, giving the opportunity to someone else to grow, to shine, to give them the reins is a huge deal to that other person. So just put yourself in their shoes for a moment. And every leader should do this. This is just an extra key that I'm giving you. But every leader should put themselves in the other person's shoes. How great is it to be trusted? How great is it to be given a responsibility? Now you have those what we call micromanagers that are always looking over your shoulder and making sure ah, I wouldn't do it that way. And they always seem to downgrade your hard work. And so you have people under you that are craving the opportunity to do something to show you what they're capable of, but they're not given the trust to do so. The other thing part of trust or how you get people to trust you is being open and honest with them. Now, a lot of people have issues being honest with those people under them. However, you need to be truthful and honest to your staff in communicating maybe why they're not getting this now and how they possibly can get this responsibility in the future, which brings us to number two, which is forward thinking or having vision. This is one of the biggest things that I think a lot of leaders don't quite understand on a daily basis. Now, I think a lot of leaders know about it, but they don't have it in their intentional wheelhouse, if you will. Everybody wants to know what are we doing and where are we going? And this kind of starts off when you're a kid. And if you're a teacher or educator, you can understand where I'm coming from, or anyone who has kids can understand this part of it. Kids always ask, what are we doing today? When are we going? When are we gonna get there? Are we there yet? Inquiring minds want to know. Your staff are gonna to wanna to know what's on the agenda today. What are we doing? Why are we changing this? And so when we can paint a picture for them, it brings them vision. People wanna know where are we going and where am I in this? How do I contribute in our journey from point A to point B? There's nothing greater than hearing your leader, the person above you saying, in our plan going from point A to point B or in our journey to expanding, I have a vision for you. I can really see you being in this capacity or leading in this capacity or taking over this department or moving in this direction. Forward looking is saying, this is what the journey is gonna look like. And you know what? I don't want you to get worried about steps two, three, four, and five. What I want you to do is, Let's, let's talk and discuss what level one is and what that looks like. And when you have somebody that can see where they're going, know where they're going, it becomes so much more easier. It's kind of like going to your friend's house for the first time. You put that address into GPS, or I'm gonna date myself a little bit. We used to put it on MapQuest, not Google Maps, MapQuest, and you used to have to print it out, you know what I'm saying? And you'd have to print it out and you'd have to follow the directions there. And now we have GPS, we have our phones, we have Google, we have Siri, we have all these things to get us from point A to point B. And how comfortable are we when we already know what the next turn is going to be? And once you go to that friend's house back and forth over and over and over again, you don't need that anymore because you already know where you're going. And this is what we need for our employees and our leadership. We have to communicate where we are and where we're going. And that brings forward looking and having vision. Hey, if you're getting value out of this video, go ahead and click that like button. And if you're new to this channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button so we can go on this journey together developing you and your leadership. Now let's get back to it. Number three is competence. Now everybody wants to follow somebody that knows what the heck they're doing. I don't know if you've ever done this, but nobody goes on vacation and goes on a tour where the tour guide knows nothing about what they're doing. Imagine if you came to Los Angeles to come visit and you went on a tour to see where all the stars lived. And on the bus, you're going by these houses and they're like, yeah, there's a guy who lives over here and he's been pretty famous. He's been on a couple movies that you probably know. And then over here to the left, this is where that one scene happened where the guy kissed the girl, you know, that real popular movie anyways. And down the road, this is where this actor died and you would be like, what are you talking about? No one wants to follow somebody that doesn't know how to do their job. You would never go to a mechanic that can't fix your problem. You stop going to a doctor who can't diagnose your problem. Like, this is what we do. We wanna know that where we are going, who we are following, knows what they're talking about. There are leaders that are too prideful to say, I don't know, or I don't have the answer. There's nothing greater than a humble leader, a leader that says, you know what, I don't know. But here's a lesson that I will teach you. Using the word yet, you know what, that's a great question, and I don't have the answer for you yet, but I will. Give me 24 hours, I will get back to you. 
Great question. I want to know. Thank you for bringing that up. It's okay not to know. It's okay to say, I don't know. And you know what? I don't know yet, but I will know because that shows that you have a humble heart and you have the desire to know, to be better, and to make your staff better. That as a leader. The other thing that great leaders do are they're able and capable of doing the job of those people under them. Now, don't get me wrong. There are leaders out there that said, hey, I've done my time and I'm not going to go back to doing that. However, there are those leaders that have a very hard time saying, I just don't know anymore. Because here's the thing. One of the biggest complaints that I've heard from staff in doing professional development is, you know how long it's been since they've been in my position? Yeah, that's how they did it before. But you know how much time has changed since they've done this? And so now there's miscommunication with old school versus new school. And so hopefully with this, you're able to bridge that gap. Communicate with your staff, please. This is what we need to do. If you want to have a better relationship with those people who are under you, the people that you lead, communicate with them and show them you are in that position for a reason. So leadership question of the day. What was one skill, trait, characteristic of someone that you were following, somebody that was over you, that made you want to follow them or proud of being under their leadership? Go ahead and put that in the comments below so we can learn from what others are saying so we can grow together in this leadership journey. All right, let's get back to it. Number four, to inspire or inspiration. No one has ever done a job that's been happy-go-lucky, gumdrops and lollipops, 365 days every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Just doesn't happen. The fizzle, the want, the desire starts to fizzle out at times. You have good days and you have bad days, am I right? There are gonna be those people or those bosses, those people in leadership positions that need to light a fire under their staff. Not to necessarily get them working harder, faster, let's go, let's go, let's go, which is needed at times, but someone that inspires them, someone that says, this is why you're in this position. Someone that says, listen, out of all the people that we interviewed, you're the person in this position. Or look at six months ago to now, you know how much you've made this company better? I need you to stick with it. Yes, it's hard right now, but you are at a steep point, but know that around the corner is success. People need to understand how important they are, what they do in their job matters. And so these are conversations that you need to regularly have with your staff and not just when they're feeling low. Your staff need to understand how important they are, how important they are to you, and how important they are to the organization. And it goes around full circle that if you inspire them, part of that inspiration is showing them where they are in line in progress. Where are they in the journey to the vision that you spoke about earlier? You know, telling them and teaching them to stay with the process, to trust the process and not to rush the process. For them to believe not only in you and in the vision, but to believe in themselves. These conversations need to happen with staff. Listen, leadership is nothing without other people. I think the big issue when it comes to leadership nowadays is people don't understand. Leadership is people-based and not procedure-based. Now, do policies and procedures matter? Yes, but those cannot get done if you don't feed your people first. And this is how we feed our people. Let me remind you that all of these traits were needed, wanted, and desired by every demographic of every amount of income in every continent through every type of work and business. This is how we feed our people. And you know what time it is. It's time for our communication recap. So as I was saying, this is how we feed our people. We feed our people by giving trust so we can get trust. We need to be open and honest with them and have these honest conversations building up each other for a greater mission and purpose. We need to have that forward thinking and vision, not only for the company, but for the department and each individual. Competence. Everyone wants a leader who knows what they're doing and also has the ability to understand and know their blind spots to know that they're not perfect. And being humble enough to say, hey, I don't know yet, remember that key. And lastly, inspiration. Everybody wants to be inspired. Even the, the meanest, grumpiest person wants to be inspired. No one likes to stay at this level. They want to move to the next level, which is why this channel exists, because we wanna get you from this step to this step. We wanna raise the bar so you can pull yourself up to that next level. 
I look forward to coaching you on the next video so we can get you to the next level. If you like what you heard and you're interested in knowing more, go ahead and click on this video here where we go over the four leadership basics that every leader that's getting started should know. And if you click here, you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. We'll see you next time. Let's go raise that bar.